my name is Daniel. I'm the carpenter and editor here at Jesus with the Carpenter in Mooresville, North Carolina. And uh, I'm out here at a beautiful lake townhome today, and I'm installing a, a metal railing and cable, stainless cable, um, kind of partition uh, railing system between the client's kitchen and their living room space. And um, I've been working, I got this kit from ViewRail, uh, ViewRail.com, and it's their uh, express kit. I really enjoy working with it so far. I've got just a little bit left to do, but I did want to do a video because they have a lot of videos up on YouTube and also on their website, uh, but they're not explaining their express kit. I get the impression their express kit is one of the newer options they have because when we initially did this job with a client, uh, we were looking at a slightly different kit and they come out with the express kit. Uh, the kit we were looking at for our client was really just the same thing. There's a few different components uh, about this kit and that one, but the express kit, what makes it awesome is that they have it you know, on the shelf ready to ship. So you don't have to wait two weeks or so for them to put together parts. And also, I think this is a lot more user-friendly kit system than what I've seen uh, on their website, just for a couple of different reasons. So anyway, I went ahead and ordered their post kit um, and everything came in like it was supposed to. The only thing I was missing was some cable cutters and I got those from Lowe's. I got the 18 inch cable cutters. These are actually bolt cutters, but they do the same thing. Um, and I just started getting ready to install today and noticed that there was a couple of things about the install on their written instructions and on their website that were a bit ambiguous. And I think if they do a, a video specifically for the Express kit, um, it'll clear all those things up. But until then, hopefully this can serve as a resource to some of you guys out there. Especially since the Express kit really is aimed and marketed towards the do-it-yourselfer, not a contractor. So I'm hoping this might help some of you guys that are out there trying to figure out some of the nuts and bolts of this. The hardest part of the install is going to be the tensioning, the installation, crimping, and tensioning of the cables. And so that's what I'm going to cover here. It's not going to be a long video. It's not going to be professor produced at all. I'm just going to be talking you through it. That's really what you need. You just need someone to show you a little bit, um, but mostly talk you through it. So uh, what you missed in the video so far, besides me putting on the first several cables, was just the installation of the post. What you want to make sure is that you have plenty of uh, wood underneath the substrate to grab those lag bolts. These posts are held on by four lag bolts. Now, this was actually a renovation. It was an existing townhome that's pretty much gutted down the framing and then built back. And so I worked hand in hand with the client to make sure that the contractors who were doing the work uh, on the flooring made sure that they stacked and blocked joists beside each other from this outer edge here to about seven inches inward. That way, no matter where I drove my lags, I would be hitting not just subfloor, you really need to hit joists below subfloor. So just be you know, weary of that. If you're gonna be installing this on a deck or an existing space, make sure that there's proper structure underneath. And you could you know, go in underneath and block and all that stuff, that's fine. As long as you're hitting some two by four material underneath. The lag bolts are about four inches thick or long. And so and just be mindful of that. So I installed my lags, um, just this one there. I made sure I did level the post, which is pretty easy. I did have to use just a little bit of um, some shimming on the middle post. But for the most part, they were pretty within reason, and I would just modulate the tension on the lags themselves, corner to corner, to make sure they were level this way and that way. Uh, obviously, make sure everything was congruent, straight to the wall, and uh, they have some trim here, so I pushed this inward about a half inch. That way, when the thickness of this cover block came over, it didn't rub against this trim. So just you know, be mindful of things like that. The next thing after that was I installed the top rail. I made ours custom for this client out of poplar and um, added a little lip because there is actually going to be a, a little bit of a bar top, so to speak, where they could put drinks up on this ledge and that way they'd have a lip so it wouldn't fall this way. Um, so all that's been done. And then once you get that triangulation, that you know, strength that's built between the rails and the top uh, rail being put together, then you're ready to start adding and getting the stage that's kind of tricky. So uh, as far as the cabling, I've got um, a whole spool of it and it came as a hundred foot spool, which is plenty for this project. But what they didn't say, and I wish they had, is when you start to unravel the tape that holds all this together, man, that thing just explodes. So just be careful. I almost got injured. <laughs> and it, I was screaming like I was a schoolgirl. I was like, ah! Um, definitely unsurprised. Uh, surprised how much tension was on that, that cable. So if you're real, if you're watching this, you probably need to put a disclaimer. You can put something right here in like bright tape that says, hey, there's tension on this reel. Be very careful when you first untape it. Uh, I didn't have that or I didn't see it. <laughs> if they have it. So anyway, um, once you get it unreeled, you'll need to kind of you know, get your uh, cable spool unraveled enough. You can start doing one run, and you start in the middle. And if you ever you know, work with drums, the way you tension the drums, you do kind of a starfish formation. 
You know, you tension 12 o'clock, then 6 o'clock, and then 9 o'clock, then 3 o'clock, and so forth. It's the same idea with this. You're going to start in the middle, then go up, then down, then up, then down. And they say you're supposed to cut all the cables first, then start going about putting on the nipples, or whatever you want to call those. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that, especially for a beginner. At this point, yeah, maybe I could. But what I didn't want to do was cut them all wrong and then have to be out of materials. So what I suggest is go ahead and cut one. Make sure you follow the directions right in this video and that you're getting a good solid connection. Everything's good. It's the way you're supposed to be. And then you can actually you know, lightly tension this one and then go to the one below it and then the one above it, the one below it. And you'll see as you kind of keep going that they get a little looser. That's fine. I'm not looking for ultimate tension right now. Uh, I'm just doing one at a time this way and so far I've had success. Okay, so when you get the reel out, you're going to get a clean edge. You're not going to have to make a cut. You're going to guard it. You already have a clean edge. Uh, one of the things they say in the instructions is that um, you're supposed to uh, run it all the way through to the last post and then put on the threaded connector. I found it easier uh, since it fits through when it's crimped. Just go ahead and crimp it at this stage because it would be a lot harder for me to crimp it back here against the wall. And I might damage the, the sheetrock or the nice ship wax they have back there. So uh, I go ahead and crimp it now. And... Um, one of the things, if you're, especially if you cut this, it's a little frayed, just kind of pinch it back in if you need to by hand or pliers. And I found if it doesn't want to go in, kind of twist it, and that'll help it to go in. It just has to go in about half an inch. And at that point, it's ready to be crimped. Now, the crimping tool they give you, um, that comes with the, the installation kit, it's a little bit ambiguous within itself. It's, it says to go to number 10, and that's what you want to do. Well, there's two numbers. You're seeing a 10, and then down below it, you're seeing a 35. And so what you're seeing is kind of a gear that can, you know, cycle through to different uh, collet sizes or die sizes and so since you want 10 make sure that you're getting the 10 with the 10 on top okay and you'll see it's one of the smaller kind of stop sign hexagons when it comes together so hopefully that's focusing i'm just going to hop back behind my camera real quick to make sure it's still filming and then i'll show you how to crimp these cool all right still filming all right um so i push this in i want to make sure obviously it's fully seated you don't want to crimp this bad boy until you know that's fully seated. And I'm a little nervous because they gave me exactly 20 of each uh, of the collets and the receivers that I need. Uh, and that's it. I need exactly 20 of each. So like, in other words, I can't screw up one. <laughs> uh, if I had known it, uh, I would have the exact number. I would have asked them, hey, can you send me another couple packages? That way if I screw up, I'm not waiting two weeks to finish this job. So I would advise that. Just be real. If someone needs 20, send them 25. Um, or at least given the option. Uh, by the way, the sales team was great and I uh, had a really good experience with them. They actually give you a personal sales rep, which I thought was really awesome. Um, but just for the sales team, you know, that's something you probably want to think of is not giving clients exactly what they need, try to give them more. Okay, and you'll notice uh, I crimp everything twice and that's in the directions, just to make sure you get a solid connection. I've also noticed that when you're going to the collet to crimp it, try to crimp it like not right at the top of that ridge, but just about maybe at 16th below. One of them I crimped and it slightly made the threads go this way. It didn't mess with the installation at all, it was no problem, but uh, I haven't gotten that since and I've just been dipping down about a 16th of an inch off that raised ridge there for my first crimp and then the other one I put right below it. Um, yeah, it takes a fair amount of tension, especially the first time you do one. I've found it leveraging against your body helps. And then once you've got that crimped, then this can pass right through, all the way through to the last post, which in my case is just a three. And at the very last part, I'm gonna screw one of these in. You'll notice it's got an Allen head kind of flange on one side, and then it's got a female end to receive the male threads. And so what's gonna happen is you can't see it because of the camera angle. I'm gonna push this all the way through. Once it comes through, I'm just gonna pass it through and I'm gonna basically tension this on by threading it through until I can get it as much as I can hand tight. And then I'm gonna take some uh, pliers and my Allen wrench they include. That's down here. And I'm just gonna just tighten it just in, like maybe another half turn until I feel it hit. And that's basically what I'm gonna do right now. Um, I just wanna do that where you can see it. So here we go. sure my cable is full is it tangled up and I probably should have done that with this output so that's another thing I've learned is yeah the cable is it's untensioning it likes to bundle up and hear ball up so you just kind of have to 
at least for that one run you're doing. This case is about eight feet. I gotta get about 12 feet or so of this out and loose. And enough so that I can manipulate it without having to fight it. I wouldn't call this a difficult do it yourself project, but I would say it's good to see someone do it beforehand. Um, and just get an idea of where kind of the, the trigger spots are so you can go through them with that. Okay, so I think I've got about that. I'm gonna push it through. A little bit about what we do. Um, I do freestanding furniture, built-ins, wall cladding, a lot of modern doors, and more kind of fine grade furniture. We do some trim work on wainscoting and crown molding and that kind of thing. But as you guys know, that's a niche market. There are people who just do that. Uh, but we do incorporate that into our built-ins. I just want to say it's a service we you know, promote all the time. We can do it, but there's probably people who can do it faster and cheaper than us to just do trim. So those are some of our services, and every now and then we get these little one-off projects like this one. Where, hey, if I can't, if I haven't done it before, I'll tell the client I've never done it before, but if we give me a shot, I'm sure we can figure it out. And that's kind of how this one went. Um, really glad I was able to do this. It's a cool project. It's good to get to do something unique, something different, something we don't typically do. And uh, super cool client can trust us to do this. And on the other hand, I don't think there's a lot of people who've done these before. They're fairly new. Like I said, this express kit's pretty new. View Rails is a fairly new company, I believe. Uh, they don't just do the metal cable railing systems, but they also do like wooden posts and mules and basically anything staircase related. But um, I even got the impression that they're kind of still kind of trying to react to this, this new market. These systems, as I'm sure you're aware, used to be more commonly done in commercial settings, but now they're starting to be more residential in design, which is cool. So, I mean, you can totally do this. It's not the hardest project. Just takes a little time, a little know-how. So that's the purpose of this video. Um, now, here's another place on the directions where it gets a little tricky. They say to go all the way out, pull it out to the end of the post, and it says to measure an inch and a quarter from the end of the post, the outside edge, and cut it. Well, what does that mean? An, an inch and a quarter this way or an inch and a quarter that way? And I couldn't get a straight answer from the customer service team. I left the voicemail with the guy who apparently knew the answer. Uh, and I'm sure he'll call back probably today or tomorrow, but that's not doing me any good right now. <laughs> I'm trying to get this job done. So what's the answer, okay? And the answer is you measure from the outside edge and then come an inch and a quarter inward and make the cut there. So let me tell you how I do it. I just take a little uh, marker and I'm gonna mark the end of this. But before I do that, I wanna make sure that flange on that collar is flush, it is. Sometimes it'll knock out. Okay, I'm gonna mark the end of this post. Okay, and I'm gonna check to make sure my camera's still rolling. So I'm not talking to myself. It is, God bless you for making it 13 minutes in, the most lack of produ pro professional production video ever. All right, so now I've got a little blue mark, and I'm gonna take my tape out and measure an inch and a quarter in from there. And make another mark. So I've got the mark that represents the outer edge of the post, and then another mark an inch and a quarter this way, okay? And then what I've learned is I need to go ahead and just flip my fingers and erase that first mark I made because it can be viewable once you do the install of it. And if it, you forget to do it, it comes off pretty easy. All right, I found it's easier to let the kind of the post hold everything. And I'm going to cut this. Now, the key with this, with this 18 inch guy I got from Lowe's, it's about $20 is you need to make sure that the cable's all the way down the jaws. If you cut it halfway, it won't cut it. This is a bolt cutter, not a cable cutter. So the, way, the key to make this like a cable cutter is just get it further down the way so you get a good clean cut. This was supposed to come with the kit apparently, um, but I understand that with the express kits, sometimes they don't you know, mention that you may need one. So again, sales team, if you're doing the express kits with folks, please make sure that they need to know to purchase a cable cutter um, or know to get one at Lowe's. Okay, so you can see it doesn't quite make it to the end. It's an inch and a quarter inward. That's perfect. It's a pretty clean cut. If it isn't, you can take the pliers, kind of pinch it around a little bit. Now I'm ready to go ahead and put my 
uh, threaded collar sleeve over and clamp this down. The trickiest part that, that for me about this is making sure that I don't accidentally knock that forward in the process of getting this loaded up into the die crimper tool. And so right before I, I crimp it, I just push everything together to make sure it's solid and then off I go. And thankfully I'm like 7%. Praise the Lord, because I, as I said earlier, I have no extra collets. <laughs> All right, back again, same thing. You always want to crimp it twice. Probably should be wearing eye protection. Okay, cool. All right, so they give you this little piece of uh, wire, yeah, metal wire. It's just cut, it's about a six inch piece. It's not really a fancy tool. All it's gonna do, it's gonna go into the little hole that sits right there at the bottom of this thread. Just for a second to help align the collet. So this part can be a little tricky, but it's not too bad. So I'm gonna pass this through. I'm gonna connect that on the other side, push it in there, okay? And then push the whole apparatus through the hole. Now, you can't see it from your vantage point on your camera, but the little threaded collet's inside here, I can't see it. That's why you need the alignment tool. I'm gonna push the alignment tool over the thread rod carefully and try to get it to seat with the threads on the collar nipple, and you'll feel it engage. Once it engages, you can remove your alignment tool, thread of wire, tighten it in by hand, and then do the rest while holding it on this side, do the rest with that key. okay? And then skid as tight as you can, hand tight. I'll have to do the other side, do maybe a little turn and turn over here too. Just trying to get that uh, tension out of the cord. So yeah, this is not super tight. I'm not gonna do the final tensioning sequence until I get all of them in. And then I'll, I'll do the middle, and boom, 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 boom. And then I guess you do it again. And I think that's pretty much the crux of this video. I'm no expert, I've been doing this for a total of like an hour and 15 minutes. So um, <laughs> I hope I've told you correctly, but at least I think I've told you more than I was able to get from the videos on the ViewRail website. A little bit of information about pricing uh, for this entire kit was shipped about $900. Each one of the posts were give or take about $100. Uh, and then the tool set up, you know, was, was costly. But, um, you know, for all in all, for around $1,000, um, I think this is a really nice upgrade of this space if you could do it yourself. All right, guys, so I just got done doing most of my tensioning and realized that there's a couple things I want to talk about about this process, too. The tools you need for this are just a set of standard uh, lineman pliers and the Allen head screw um, a handle they give you with the kit. And so what I like to do is to take two pieces of tape, find whichever one you're going to start with in the middle first. Since there's 10 here, you could choose either this one or that one. It doesn't matter. So I'll choose this one by middle, which means I just want to put a painter's tape piece on either side of the middle. And this is just going to help me keep track of which ones I've tightened as I kind of go up that sequence. And so I'm basically just going to put my lineman pliers and just clamp on the uh, the cable just to the left of the post and then tighten a decent amount with my uh, wrench by hand. Uh, notice I'm not using a, a socket set with this, I'm just using the hand tool. Uh, these collets, I mean, they're, they're not the strongest metal in the world, I had to guess. I, I'm sure there's a tolerance they have, but I don't want to exceed it. Once you've gotten the tension pretty good, I mean, it's not super tight, but it's tight enough, you'll know, okay? So again, just clamp the lineman and then Torque it down, and then go to the other side. The same thing. <laughs> um, I don't have a tape over there, so I'm one, two, three, four, five down. One, two, three, four, five. Here I am. Hit it with the uh, pliers, and then tighten, and then I come back to the other side. And I like to do it right, left, right on each one, and then from there, I go to the next one. We'll try my little painter's tape, so I know which one it is. And as I tighten these, I just kind of Move my painter's tape up as I go. That way I know I haven't missed one because it's pretty easy with 10 of them. Um, you'll notice as you start tightening them, again, back to my percussion analogy earlier, I used to be a, a percussion major, just like a drum, like a snare drum. You know, you're tightening your lugs on top, and as you tighten 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock all the way through the sequence, you notice that the very first ones you started with are now loose because you put an equivalent amount of pressure throughout the whole unit, right? Same thing with here. This feels nice and tight here on these ones I'm doing, but as I go through the whole sequence, I'll come back and feel like, man, 
but still loose. Why? Because you're then equalizing the tension throughout that whole rail. So that's what you have to do this process. They say twice. I'm on my third attempt. So I, I, once I do it three times, it feels good and tall. I'll call it quits, but that's basically what you're doing, okay? So I'll time lapse, I guess, the rest of this, and you guys can see me kind of go through it, or I'll speed up the tempo so you don't have to sit there and watch me for 17 minutes tightening <laughs> these things. One, two, three, four, five. Cool, that's it. Went through the whole sequence. Everything's good and tight. I wouldn't say I have a balancing act on top of one of these wires, but um, they're all good and tight. So that's what you're looking for. Now, one of the things I talked about, what's the difference between some kits and the others? And you know, some of the higher end kits have little collets to go inside each one of these. Uh, they're not needed. It's more of an aesthetic thing. In my mind, they look kind of busy. So I actually kind of prefer the look of the Express without the little collets. And uh, I talked to them about that. It was, it was solely be an aesthetic thing anyway. It wouldn't be like, especially in the interior setting, that that would affect the longevity of the core. Now, if you're outside on a deck, for instance, that's when they recommend those collets because of wind, things that can make vibrations and so forth, uh, it may be a wise thing. And also it would stop water from getting into the post, probably more than without them. So, um, so those are things you might wanna think about for an exterior application. But for the interior applications, I think the Express Kit has is, is been a pleasure to work with. Um, I would say that uh, most things were pretty self-explanatory and I hope that the video here helped explain some of the rest of the stuff. Um, if you have liked the video, um, please you know, let me know. I hope you guys can, can put, this, put this to use. It can help you with your project. Our Instagram and our Facebook handles, if you want to check out some of our work, is Facebook or Instagram.com slash JesusWasACarpenter.nc. So Jesus was a carpenter, all one word, dot NC, like North Carolina. And uh, like and share pages. We appreciate that. That helps us for a small business. And um, we appreciate that kind of uh, sharing and, and publicity. So uh, anyway, if you have questions, drop them below. I'll do my best to answer them. And I hope this, uh, this video uh, was of use to you guys. Enjoy these final shots. And uh, take care. God bless.